hope you brought your appetite for this one. 11 Ways All-You-Can-Eat Buffets Make Their Money Hey, you ever wonder how all-you-can-eat buffets could possibly make any money? I mean, given the name, how on earth do they feed people's bottomless appetites and still come out with a profit? Restaurant guests can grab plate after plate, or even stack everything vertically on one, of an endless array of dishes and cuisines. All of this for one, usually low price. So what's their secret to success? Well, these sorts of buffets have some tricks up their sleeve to keep business rolling, and you're about to find out exactly what they are. Now, before we get into the -the behind-the-scenes of your favorite buffet-style restaurants, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, where you'll find the answers to life's biggest questions. Be sure to ring that bell to be notified of our daily uploads here on The Bright Side of Life. Alright, first things first. Who came up with a plan to let people grab as much food as they want? Well, you can thank the Swedish for that. The buffet was a highlight of medieval feasts, but it was the Swedes who formally introduced the Bravins board in the 16th century. This elaborate buffet was their way of welcoming guests. The original menu consisted of finger foods – no, not real fingers – cured meats, smoked fish, and bravin a traditional spiced vodka. In the 18th century, they introduced both cold and hot dishes to the table and changed the name to smorgasbord, which I'm sure you've heard of. The smorgasbord gained global fame during the 1912 Olympic Games in Stockholm. And the Swedes brought it to the US at the 1939 World's Fair. But it was Herb McDonald, a show producer for the El Rancho Vegas Hotel, who decided to use this style as a marketing strategy to keep patrons gambling. In the mid-40s, he opened the Buckaroo Buffet, a 24-hour all-you-can-eat spread for the price of $1. The endless buffet's long and enduring history proves how effective and popular it is. But now, let's get into the details as to how the whole thing works and how they manage to turn a profit. Here's a list of their most effective methods. Counting down from number 11, a strategic layout. Anyone who's ever been to a buffet might have noticed this strategic layout. At the start of the line, the first thing you see is carb-rich foods like fried rice. They sometimes put veggies or salads at the beginning too. The line starts with these dishes because they have the cheapest ingredients but still do the job of filling up your belly. It's only further down the line when you can get meat, fish, or other more expensive main courses. Number 10. The size of the serving dishes. Besides the layout, they also control the size of the serving dishes. Cheap starches and veggies are in the big heaping trays with more jumbo-sized serving spoons. You can scoop out large quantities of rice and fill your plate up faster at the beginning of the line. Trays for more expensive foods, on the other hand, aren't that huge and full. They often give you tongs to grab the pieces one at a time so that you can't simply pile it on your plate. You have no choice but to limit yourself and move on because you don't want to hold up the line. It's genius! Number 9. Smaller plates and utensils Buffets don't limit this size control to the serving dishes. They also effectively monitor the size of the plates and eating utensils. They provide smaller-than-average dinner plates and tiny dessert bowls. Even the spoon and fork you're given are smaller than the normal ones. It boils down to the psychology of eating. Based on a study conducted by researchers at the MRC L.C. Widdowson Laboratory at the University of Oxford, limiting the bite or portion size reduces overeating. So it's no wonder you can't find full-size dinner plates or big soup bowls on an all-you-can-eat buffet table. Number 8. A huge food cost margin Despite all that, there are still restaurant patrons who overeat. They're called super diners. And buffets are well aware of people who could eat three times what the average person could. Which brings us to the cost of food. 
According to chef Jonas Mika Luster, the price the restaurant pays for the food or ingredients is just 30-35% to of the price guests pay for a meal. A super diner doesn't burn a hole in the buffet's budget simply because they have such a huge food cost margin. Number 7. Computer-monitored food waste So, there's bound to be food waste, given the fact that our eyes are often a lot bigger than our bellies. So how do buffets deal with this? Well, they use sophisticated computer software to monitor food waste. This way, they can track everything from the weekly waste amounts, to how much is consumed daily, to what dishes are most popular for the diners depending on the day of the week or the season. After this rigorous data gathering, they can determine what types of dishes people want and how much they're likely to consume. Some buffets even charge double as a form of punishment to diners who have leftovers on their plate. Yow! Just like mom said, you better clean that plate. Number 6. The Fill the Customer's Belly Cheaply motto. Psychology Today explains that every buffet's mission is to fill the customer's belly as cheaply and as quickly as possible. How do they do it? They have a flexible menu designed towards cheap dishes. Vegetables and meat are bought in bulk and at a cheaper price, but they're still high quality and versatile. The same goes for rice and noodle-based foods. Number 5. Buying seasonal and regional ingredients. If an ingredient, for example tomatoes, is in season, it's a lot cheaper than usual, so a buffet can buy it in bulk. They also take advantage of locally sourced foods or ingredients because they tend to be cheaper. What's great about that flexible menu is that they can easily change it. So, if an ingredient moves off-season and prices started to increase, they can remove it from their lineup and exchange it with something cheaper. As a bonus, it also attracts more patrons when they use ads like locally sourced or seasonally fresh. This marketing trick creates an illusion that diners are getting something extra special. Number 4. Profitable drinks. Of course, how can you wolf down spoonfuls of food without a beverage to wash it down? And this is where buffets really rake in the cash. Drinks aren't included in the price of the buffet and don't fall into the same 30% food cost markup. Instead, they sell it at up to a 90% profit margin. It's their sneaky and clever way of pocketing more dough per person before you even get to the buffet line. Number 3. Eliminating labor costs Everyone in the food business can testify how labor costs take up a huge percentage of their profit. But this isn't really a problem for all-you-can-eat joints. They don't need to hire waiters to serve food because diners get their own drinks and plates. This is the benefit of self-service dining. Fancy plating or elaborate food presentation by skilled chefs isn't necessary either. The dishes are prepared and cooked in advance in large quantities. It saves labor costs and allows buffets to enjoy larger profits. Number 2. Charging higher prices for higher quality For some diners, a cheaper price buffet isn't always better. This was proven in a study conducted by the Cornell Food and Brand Lab at Cornell University. A team of researchers studied how the price of a buffet influenced customers. Of the 139 participants who dined at an Italian buffet in New York, one group was charged $4 while the other had to pay $8. Both groups ate from the same pizza buffet menu, yet the ones who paid $8 were more satisfied than those who paid less. This goes to show that higher prices often get more customers in the door. And number 1. Banning people Now, believe it or not, diners can get banned for overeating. I know, it seems totally unreasonable given the whole all-you-can-eat promise in their branding. But it does happen, like in 2012, when an overdiner by the name of Bill Whist was banned from one buffet-style fish fry. He was piling so much on his plate that the restaurant was running out of food for other patrons. The establishment says that it wasn't a one-time thing, 
and they even called the police to settle the matter. Well, endless buffets still run a business, and they can't do that if people take advantage of the privilege given to them. In other words, they're saying, hey, this is an all-you-can-eat joint, and buddy, that's all you can eat. And that's basically it. The science behind all-you-can-eat buffets is a play of economics, marketing, consumer behavior, and a bit of, uh, force. Sure, you can still eat anything you want, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're getting what you pay for. After all, the moment you step inside the restaurant, they already have full control over what you'll eat and how much you'll consume. So, it's up to you to decide if you're really getting such an incredible deal. Hey, what are your thoughts on endless buffets? Do you still think it's worth having a meal there? Tell us in the comments below! If you found this video eye-opening or helpful, then give us a like and share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe and always stay on the Bright Side of life.